Hey gang, uh, I just want to uh, show you something awesome that I just learned about. Uh, super cool along uh, the lines of dealing with our statistics and making graphs and charts for them. So here we are on our page for the Green Bay Packers um, player ages and, and weights. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to highlight uh, all of these these ages okay? just the just the numbers. So I'm going to shift and hold, or I'm going to click left click and hold that down, drag that down until I highlight until I highlight them all, and then I'm going to copy those. So I can do a Control C, or you can do a right click and copy, or go up to Edit and copy. I want to copy those numbers. And then I'm going to go to a new tab here. And in the address bar, I'm going to type in desmos.com and click Start Graphing. And now I just learned a whole bunch of new functions here on Desmos that I didn't know they could do. For example, if I type in min and then a left parentheses, and then I do a Control V to paste all of those values in, okay? Uh, I'm going to do home just to take a look because what happens for some reason when you paste these in uh, like this, uh, it kind of, the parentheses get messed up. So we have to go back. We have to delete that parentheses, put it in again. So now I'm going to push end. Now I go to the end and I can put my parentheses and it tells me that the minimum is 22. Uh, I can do the same thing with max. Um, again, I need to get those parentheses in there. So home and end will take you to the beginning and the end of your, your data set. So maximum of 36. Um, we can do something with uh, median. So you type in median, paste it in there, um, home, and put that parentheses in there, and then end, and put that parentheses in at the end. The median is 25. So now I've got the minimum, the maximum, the median. Um, I can find the I can find a quartile. So this would be for like for box plots here. Um, so I'll paste that in there. Home parentheses and and now here we want the first quartile. So we would type in one, and that gives us twenty four. So that means our minimum value is twenty two. Then after 25% of the data, we hit our first quartile, which would be at 24. After another 25% of the data, we hit our median, which would be at 25. After another 25% of our data, we would hit the third quartile. So I'm going to paste that data in again. Go home, put that parentheses in, go end. This time I want the third quartile. So I'm going to type in a 3. And that's 27. So after another 25% of the data, we hit 27. And then after the last 25% of the data, we get to 36. This is your five number summary here. This is what you need to make a box plot. But even better, we can just do that by typing in box plot and then pasting our data in. Go home, put that parentheses in, and put that parentheses in. Uh, and then it says offset one, height one. We're going to leave the height at one. Offset one just means it's going to move it up off the x-axis a little bit. Um, and we hit enter. I don't see a box plot. Well, we're talking about ages from like 20 to 36. So let's go up to the wrench up here. Let's change the x-axis to go from 20 to 36. And there's our box plot. Actually, let's go up a little bit higher. Let's go up to 40. And there's our box plot. So we can see what this box plot looks like. This also helps tell us what the distribution looks like. The distribution is skewed to the right because we've got this long tail of data to the right. And in fact, this, this part of our median or our box is larger. The right side is larger than the left side. The right whisker is larger than the left whisker. That tells us that this is skewed to the right. Okay. But we can see our minimum of 22. That's what we got at the top over here. Our first quartile of 24, our median of 25, our third quartile of 27, and then our maximum of 36. So actually a real simple way to make a box plot and um, much easier than, than what we've been doing. Um, 
Not only can we do box plots easily, though, uh, we can do histograms. So if I type in histogram, paste my data in, and put parentheses around it. Uh, at the end here, we're going to put a, we can do a comma one to uh, put the width of the bins at one. Um, I'm just going to click this little box plot thing to take it off of there. Um, we can see that, there we go, if we go bring this down low enough, we can see that our highest amount is up here at uh, what looks like 8, 9, 10, 11, okay. um, but what we can do is we can have it centered uh, so that the bar is centered on the number. So for example, this bar right here at 24, 24 is in the middle of the bar, or we can center it on the left. So now 24 belongs in the, uh, the bin that's just to the right of it. 24 is the number on the left. That's what goes in the bin just to the right. Um, I actually think putting it at the center works really nicely because then you can see easily that 24 is the age of the people that are in this bin. Okay. Uh, notice here we have count, but we also have this relative. And that's what we were trying to do on Google Sheets the other day. All I have to do here, click relative, and now it's a relative histogram, relative frequency histogram. Uh, the tricky part about this is now the, the, all the bins got really short. And that's because we're talking about relative frequency. So again, we'll just make sure our ages are going from 20 to 40. And now our y-axis, we can go from negative 0.1. And let's just try 0.5. Okay. In fact, we could even go lower. We could go 0.2. Okay. It has to be less than 1 because we're talking about a relative frequency here, meaning 20%, 30%, 40%. We can't have over 100%. So we do that, and we get our relative frequency histogram. Um, so this is a, a much simpler way of finding, uh, making a histogram, making a box plot, making a relative frequency histogram. Okay? Uh, so this is something that I would uh, think that this, you would be very valuable in using when you're trying to um, make any of these different types of graphs or charts. Um, to represent your distributions. I almost forgot to mention um, that we might do other stuff besides histograms and box plots. Um, remember, we could find the mean or the average of all of our data. So if I type in mean, it tells me the mean is at 26.06 repeating. I could also find the standard deviation. Now, if I just type in STDEV, that's going to be the sample standard deviation. So if I was using the Green Bay Packers as a sample of all NFL players, this is what I would use. However, in this case, I'm considering the Green Bay, the, the numbers that we have for the Green Bay Packers as a population because I'm only interested in the Green Bay Packers, and I have the entire population of Green Bay Packers from last year. So I'm going to put a little P at the end signify that it's a population standard deviation. And I'm going to paste those values in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put those parentheses in. And you can see the standard deviation is 3.37. And remember, standard deviation kind of talks about, on average, how far away is each point from the mean. Okay? So on average, the average player is about 3.37 years away from the mean of 26.07 years. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about this is Desmos actually does a normal distribution as well. And we're going to look at that in another video, uh, but we're going to need this mean and this standard deviation to look at that. But that'll be in another video coming up. Uh, hopefully, uh, this will be a lot easier for you making histograms and, and box plots uh, now that you know how to use Desmos.